So, yes, shooters and reloaders, it's Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to you from Hot Lead Zone. And also, hello to all of you Three Circles passengers and members out there. So, yes, these mini ball moose slugs that are patterned after mini balls are very interesting. And yes, I've gone ahead and filled in the hollow base with this polysiloxane so that the wad can't get into it on firing. But if you're a fan of Elmer Keith bullets, these will really appeal to you because look at that sharp shoulder there, semi wad cutter shoulder. Very interesting slug. So here you see the Winchester AA wad and then we went ahead and used a pair of heavy scissors to cut the base off and then use a knife to trim that a little smooth so we have a raw shot cup with the little thicker base section there. Then we take one of the brush wads from BPI and we flatten off. It's actually a double-ended obturator but we don't need the bo both ends to obturate so we flatten off one end with sandpaper and that allows us to put this together as you see and there is what it looks like with the slug and two 20 gauge spacers in there so we got it all the proper height of pedals the proper fit into the shot cup the nice thick base of the shot cup the nice Galandi compression zone and the obturator. Okay, I just adjusted the drill press to give us a little bit more depth of crimp. No rattle. That's exactly what we want. Well, the head and shoulders best ones are the five right in the middle done with a 12S4 wad with the pedals shortened. And we're ready to go to the range. So uh, I've loaded up all the slugs that Jeff at Tal Flittermoss gave me. So we got enough here to do a good test. Now we're shooting the 12S3 wad with 28 grains of Herkel. Okay, we had a target change there, so right in the middle of the group. No. Yeah. 
So here are the range results and we shot these all at 25 yards because that's a good range to screen out and get good groups at 25 that we can go ahead and then test at 50. If a load won't shoot well at 25, it sure won't shoot well at 50. So we shot our first cider with 28 grains of Herco and the Winchester AA 12 wad that was cut down and we shot here. Then we adjusted the scope, Simmons scope, four power scope, and then the second cider hit, hit here and we gave it the same amount of adjustment to get it up into the point of aim here. So we have four rounds left of the Winchester AA wad and that moose slug and we shot this group. Now this group is a nice circular group it's about a little over an inch and a half at 25 yards and that was a promising start. That's not a bad load because it'll probably shoot somewhere around three inches at 50 yards making it a great load for hunting from blinds. At any rate, so we got here, notice the holes are nice and round. That indicates stability of the slug because if you got non-round holes, then that slug's not stabilized. Now this is not a surprise because we're using a rifled Thompson Center 12 gauge barrel. Now the muzzle velocity of these loads was 1230 feet per second and the standard deviation average was 10.2 so these things shoot pretty consistently and I think that if we work up some loads with different powder charges we'll get even better results but uh, with a limited number of slugs I had this is the best we could do and to be fair to Larry and the Moose company for these slugs the alloys that Larry used to cast the limited number of slugs I had. Some were real hard, others were soft pure lead, but then there seemed to be some of these slugs that the hardness was in between. So I tried to sort them out as best I could to do this testing. And again here's an example of the Winchester AA-12 wad with a compression zone cut off and used to be a sibo for the moose slug. Now the 12 S3 loads did not shoot well and that's really a shame because the 12 S3 wad seems to be uh, a wad that should be strong enough to handle shooting slugs. But when I recovered the, the wads out of mud puddles what you had is stripping of the wad pedals and also notice the shot cup base has been really knocked askew from the perpendicular to the line of flight. Now these wads did not hit anything. They were recovered around the 35 yard line and in, in mud puddles. So what you got is a deformation on firing. Give you an idea, here's another one. This one's really mangled. The whole base of the, of the shot cup came loose and some of the circular compression zones started coming apart. So the 12S3 wad doesn't really shoot well with slugs and I found that to be true with uh, using this wad for Lee and Lyman 525 slugs as well. So to be fair to the moose uh, slug this probably wasn't a good wad to use, but I was hoping I'd get good results with it. This is unacceptable in size of group at 25 yards. At 50, you're, you're all over the paper. And we still have good stability of the, of the slug in flight, though. So what that tells me is that as the slug was exiting the barrel, it was just being the exit from the barrel was very inconsistent. Now the Federal 12S4 wad was a different story and with the 12S4 wad what you get is a shorter compression zone than the 12S3 wad. 
So with a shorter compression zone, you're less likely to have bad deformation of the compression zone shooting slugs unless, of course, the compression zone is so weakly designed that it won't do well. This is a good design and also a nice short compression zone. But that results in longer pedals, so to compensate, we cut the pedals short so that when the slug is put in, the shoulder of the slug is even to the top of the pedal. And of course, we have the hollow base filled in with the polysiloxane, but I also included one 20 gauge filler wad that just sat in there to raise the slug a little bit off of this tighter zone here so that the slug wouldn't bulge the pedals out. And when we shot that combination at 25 yards, the first three went into that group there and that was pretty, that was looking pretty good. But then the fourth and fifth round didn't do as well. So I think the 12S4 watt has some definite possibilities and by tweaking the powder charge we can test and see if we can get a better shooting load. Certainly 28 grains of Herco gives us a reduced power slug and we got a lot of room to take that power factor up a bit. And it might shoot better or it might shoot worse, we don't know. But that's promising. So Larry over at Moose, these slugs I know you made for muzzle loaders and uh, mini ball fans, but they got some good application for sure for 12 gauge slug shooting. And certainly muzzle loader shooters that like to use this bullet can now have an option for 12 gauge. And thanks again to Jeff at Tau Fledermas for sending these slugs over to me to test. And I really appreciate that. It was really fun doing this uh, testing. These would make some ferocious hunting bullets. That's for sure. Bye for now.